welcome to another episode of Movers and Shakers of Paul. Um, today I'm super excited to speak to my guest. He doesn't need any introduction in the community of Paul. But before I say his name, um, I must say he has a very inspirational story. Um, this year was a really exciting year for him. He snatched the bronze medal at the Commonwealth Games. Uh, awesome photo finish. Um, yeah, and he also had an exciting year, you know, for two or three um, different cycling teams, traveled the world a bit. And then, of course, he's also a big inspiration to a lot of young cyclists in Paul. When you speak to them, they always speak about Clint Hendricks. And I wanted to find a bit about more about his journey. He's got a really interesting story, um, where he started and how he got to where he, well, where he is today. Yeah, um, by doing some research, I also saw he had like a big scare also, I think, 2011 day around. So I wanted to hear more about um, how he got up from that. So, Clint? Oh, and his name is Clint Hendrix. Clint Hendrix. <laughs> <laughs> Clint, thanks. Uh, what's he talking Afrikaans English? English. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, Clint, thanks so much for chatting to me. Are you on holiday? How's it working here? What? Uh, thanks for having me. Um, holiday, not really holiday. Okay. Um, so seeing the family but still have to train for prepare for the next season all right so yeah okay cool so quickly before we get into the business clint hendrix is born and bred in paul primary yeah. school and high school primary school it's magnolia primary right like cool. straight in the ghetto <laughs> <laughs> and then i went to clint Hendrix secondary all, all right, right cool so, so where did we where did we start cycling because i heard you had a stint of rugby as well so yeah i started i was playing rugby primary and like under 14 right. um, but then that's when I started cycling so I did like my trials mm -hmm. in rugby um, and then yeah my my dad was cycling in that so I was yeah I went to go watch that one race and okay. then yeah I asked him maybe if I can try it out and see okay was he also a cyclist yeah okay cool yeah. right road bike as well M more track I would say okay yeah, nice he did road but more track yeah. And also successful yeah, colors, um, SA colors? Yeah, SA colors. Uh, wow. B Temp, they did. Oh, no uh, yeah, yes. So yeah. you're flying the flag high for the yeah, Hendrix family. To. <laughs> I try to. Um, okay, cool. So tell me, when did the so when did the cycling kick in? When did the professional life kick in cycling? Um, so I, I started chasing professional direct after school. Okay. Um, 20, I finished school all nine. Hmm. So 2010, I moved up to Joburg. Wow. Yeah. Why? Because you, is that where you... Uh, Joburg, if the teams were bigger, right. um, better, stronger, so it was just make more sense to, to be riding okay. and staying up there. Yeah. At first it was a bit hard, tough, you know, um, mm. by myself and everything. Mm. Uh, made a few friends, connections, mm. uh, Nolan helped uh, out a bit. Okay. So, yeah, from there I've, I've been there ever since. Okay, cool. So, we go to Joburg and what is Joburg? So, when does the SA Colors come in? When does the professional uh, first contract come in? Uh, so, SA Colors, I got like under 16 already. As okay, a, yeah. nice. So, yeah, I got some spring book for uh, SA okay. Colors. So, my first pro contract I got after four months, I think. Wow, yeah, so, nice. Yeah, so I was fortunate enough. Uh, okay. I got... Uh, I think I got in July or June or something in Naisma Oyster Festival. We okay. got like a big cycling race there, classic as well. Yeah. I got a good result there and then after that race, a uh, team signed me and then okay. from that, after that, I basically did quite a few years. Explain to me the excitement. So you're putting in all the hours, yeah. uh, you're practicing and you get a phone call that you get, they want to sign you as a contract. I mean, what, who's the first person you call? What do you do? Uh, at first it was like that, I would say, like where you get excited mm. um, in terms of, I think you just grab whatever you can take because mm. it's your first contract mm. with the first professional and yeah. you know, everything gets given free for you, sponsorships wow. and everything like that. So, And then now it's kind of, once you mature in this mm. sports and you become more established, you kind of, you weigh up your options. Yeah, yeah of course. Of, yeah. What's better and what's not, you know. So who's the first person you called when you got the contract? Uh, yeah, I would say <laughs> maybe my mom. I would okay, say. Nice. Yeah, I phoned them, I told them the whole story. But they knew after school already I was going to okay. move up to Joburg. Yeah, and, right. uh, yeah, so they knew basically that's what I wanted to do. And they never really like uh, said anything mm. negative about, you know, you need to you do this for two years and mm. then you start looking at something else. Mm. They were like, just yeah. Mm. 
to uh, pursue your dreams if you yeah. can and you will work from yeah. there you know? because i mean when i was reading some of the other interviews you had and i think the one said that you you decided okay this is your dream this is you have to get into cycling and you just put in the hours and you just yeah. train in and day out yeah. in and out yeah. hard work oh, very hard work i was How old were you? 14 when i started wow. riding 14 and i did 120 k's already Wow. Yeah, yeah. And we rode from here all the way to like Gordon's Bay and back. Wow. Come back broke yeah. and sleep the whole day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So th that's when I really started like already. I don't say recommend that for anyone, mm. you know, in terms of hours of doing that mm. back then. Mm. Mm. Um, but yeah, after that, uh, once I started getting older, I started putting uh, my, w I think my workload was so much that I, I developed and my body could only ex absorb and handle it on a later stage, mm. if you mm. know what I'm saying. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So I did so much that it didn't really show at the time, okay. at the first like two, three years, there was glimpses always like, and that's why some people that kept on believing in me, mm. you know, um, mm. kept on like backing me. Mm. So they could see glimpses in my training and in racing, yeah. but it was never super consistent, yeah. but there was the work that was really big. Yeah. So yeah um from there i think the last couple four years or so it's been it's yeah been i really saw well, yeah. podium 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 yeah. podium um was there ever a stage where you thought you know this is too much hard work i mean nothing is happening <laughs> like you just want to say i'm done i'm i because I, I mean it happens when you work yeah, so hard i think i think like that still not okay. at times yeah uh, uh, you know, everyone's got their own personal opinion of their own sport yeah. or cycling or whatever. Yeah. Uh, with me, I would normally say it's a love-hate relationship. Mm. Sometimes I love it, sometimes I hate it. Mm. I just want to mm. don't look at my bike. And yeah. I just want a mental break from everything, mm. you know, and everyone. So, um, so there's, there's some times where I like, you know, you doubt everything and you struggle. Mm. You, you, you can't make it. You, you're struggling to find condition or form, mm. you know. And mm the results is not getting your way mm -hmm. so yeah there's a lot of times so how important is the mental part of a sport i mean I did, i'm not just cycling but yeah. you get the physicality and the because that mentalness <laughs> I, it can break you i think for, for me first i think it's 80 mm. percent mental mm. you can have all the condition all the fitness in the mm. world if you're not prepared mentally and your aura is just not right and positive mm. what signals you send out into the world mm. what you believe in it mm. can still go wrong even yeah. though you prepared 100 yeah. percent yeah so how do you how do you maintain that men uh, mental state what do, what do you do to release or whatever yeah. i try to switch off normally i try to tend to move like away from my sport okay. cycling so i would come back and then i don't want to speak cycling or mm. i don't want to mm. be in the cycling circles but mm. wherever i go you always find someone yeah to speak to you or talk to you about cycling and okay. ask you something but normally, yeah, family, friends, my girlfriend. Mm. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Where are you currently stationed? Here in Cape Town? Or no, Norfolk? here in Paul. All right, cool. Uh, um, I'm in Paul for now. Um, so I've lived in Johannesburg for eight years. Okay. Yeah, eight years. And next year I'll be living in uh, Germany. For what? Yeah. For the uh, bike aid? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So That's so cool. I'll be moving that side. Uh, for, for the year? Yeah. Girlfriend going what? Sorry? Is the girlfriend going what? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe on the latest stage. <laughs> so yeah, it's okay, nice. know, tough, you know, tough. But, yeah. Yeah, so so I saw like this year also, like the, all the tours that you did with the bike, so it's all over the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I normally travel, but now I'm just, I'm just traveling on another level. Mm -hmm. um, so we basically flew from like one country to the next country, like yeah. one week later. I saw you. Yeah. You know, one tour to the next tour. So it's pretty... It's 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 nice but draining as well, mm, you know, because you can you you like prepare for one competition, but in after that competition you have another one. So yeah, yeah, it's the traveling, the fatigue, and all that. So yeah, yeah. Um, Clint, so tell me highlight of your career, because of course we both wonder what is it now Cape August tour, and you name every year. Right? Yeah, the name Cape Town Cycle Tour. Cape Town Cycle Tour, and then of course your photo finish Commonwealth Games yeah. bronze highlight. That's the highlight. Okay, cool. Uh, Commonwealth Games. So. Yeah. Crazy thing about that like race, uh, I really felt didn't feel good that day. Wow. It was insane. Mm. Uh, I trained really hard the week before and then I, I remember the Sunday or Saturday or something like that. I was I did a long ride, like six hours or mm. something. And then after that I uh, I took a break and I got back and I could barely ride. 
Um, okay. Yeah, I heard like 10 k's an hour and I was like, this is not going to work. Okay. Turned around, went back home. The next day again, didn't feel well. Uh, and then in the race itself, I cramped with like 40 k's in. What? Yeah, I was like getting all these cramps. I still asked some teammates if they don't have any. Mm. <laughs> to help yeah. Them. And yeah, I don't know how I made it, but I was mentally, I was already prepared for this because I, I knew I was going to go from January already because mm. that's when they confirmed everything mm. that we, the teams, that yeah, yeah. the athletes that's going. So I was already prepared uh, for this from say December when I trained for it and then obviously the trials and everything and then yeah. just the selection of it. So yeah. mentally in my mind, I was prepared even though I didn't feel as good as mm. what I could have. Mm. on the day mm. so yeah well okay but of course you didn't know you finished third no or did you, did you no i had i had a little bit of a you know in the back of your mind like <laughs> yeah maybe, uh, like maybe third fourth so i was like i'm not gonna speak out of turn i'm just gonna <laughs> say fourth so when my manager came over he's like what happened i'm like now nah, fourth and they're like oh, okay cool it's not bad and then they announced it's like oh, and then that's they went insane. crazy uh, that's insane it's been you know it's been 12 years since cycling got a medal from yeah, yeah. Commonwealth Games, yeah, so it's... Wow, for South Africa? Yeah. No way, it's 12 years. That's amazing. <laughs> exactly. Ah. So, okay, cool. Yeah, it's been 12 years, man. So, so where's this medal hanging? Uh, it's in Joburg now. Okay, <laughs> yeah, in the Joburg. flat, what, in the cabinet, what? Yeah, it's uh, so we've got a little holder that we got it in. Um, okay. It's like a, with a little bit of a note how to maintain the medal and everything, so I just keep it. In. Like they tell you how to clean it? But yeah. Oh wow, yeah, yeah. and polish and everything. Yeah. <laughs> <That's insane. laughs> oh my god, that's insane. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. So, what is happening for the future for Clint? Okay, uh, so you're going to Germany next year, bike aid. Yeah, so this week thing, what is uh, boxing, boxing day? day? We're riding? Yeah, boxing day, I'm riding. Uh, First time, second time, third time? No, I don't know much now, maybe eight, nine. I wow, okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'll be riding. Um, we'll see how it is. Okay. Okay. So explain to me. I don't know what Boxing Day is. Yeah. What is Boxing Day? I think I know it's a big thing in in Paul. Mm -hmm. I don't know how old it is. Maybe you can tell me I, how it works. I think it's hundred and hundred and twenty one now, or something like that. Hundred twenty one yeah. years. Yeah. Something like that. In so Paul. Yeah. So it's the oldest track event in the world. Wow. Then so I didn't know it's that. It's very historic. Um, okay. That. So back back in the day, it was just not cycling. It was athletics as well okay yeah so they used to run um, and cycling and all the okay yeah so track and field but now it's only cycling Ooh. um that's why um uh Paul athletics club yeah. they run it because you know, all right okay. and cycling yeah so uh yeah basically cycling and it's more like it's more just historic um Ooh. the event that's why and there were so many people i think come to support and obviously yeah, it's they a big want thing. the locals to win the mm. The race and that, so, yeah. so explain to me why, why does it work because you ride around the track i don't i don't know explain I, so there's there's like a couple events on the day so you get different type of riders as okay in, say in athletics you get sprinters you get okay. long distance yeah. runners and the same where you get endurance riders and then you get sprinters okay riders. so there will be sprint events and in endurance events okay but there's one event the main event which is the 25 mile which is like okay. 40 kilometers how many laps is that that's 86 laps wow okay uh, 86 laps um 40 k's and you do it like 55 minutes maybe or so what yeah. okay uh so that's the main event um if you win that one you normally seen as a hero what yeah. okay you yeah. haven't won yet no second or second okay cool yeah so second. seeing that this year has been a highlight yeah. Yeah. Either maybe we can end it off on a bang eh? that would be we'll awesome be. dude yeah, exactly. Um, I wanted to ask you also so also you had this I think 2011 I just mentioned it in the intro um your injury scare it was like a life-threatening uh, scare it's just the weirdest thing yeah in my tell life me about the <laughs> uh, yeah, still, you... still, until this day i don't know to be honest the, the doctors couldn't really explain to me what what yeah. the main causes so there was one doctor professor so basically i was training we had a training camp in ricky's bay or something yeah um yeah and i was really i got some really good condition and everything um we did a race and then uh, in Durban, um, Bella Bella, somewhere there, yeah. um, outside, just the outskirts of Johannesburg. Yeah. Um, I got, the race was done, I wasn't feeling too well mm -hmm. um, in the race, you know, I got undressed and everything, and everyone was, there was a guy, so two teammates of mine, they were like, what's up with your arm? 
and my it was my left side yeah, it was all swollen and the veins were just popping what? and I was like I don't know but it felt like sore you know mm. so like, I'll check it out so I went like a day like that so like ah, let me just um, went to the physio so <clears throat> I went to the physio so then the lady that I was supposed to see she was not there then I saw a different lady yeah. so then she was like looked at it looked at it and then she strapped it so she said okay if it's not better in three days I must come back and I went back in three days time and then the, the, la- the lady that I was supposed to see was there so I rocked up and then the lady was like felt and was like ah this is not a sprain this is not uh, you didn't sprain any muscle or okay. tore off any muscle so she took it off and she referred me to a sports physician in Rosebank okay. I can't remember his name now um, got there um, did scans and everything he also couldn't really he didn't know what was up yeah. so he, they sent me to some other lady to do some scans um, then we had to do some infrared scans or something then they checked like the blood or your yeah. bones is, like, specifically and then they saw oh crap you have a blood clot so it was like in my neck already all the way down what? to my arm yeah and then luckily this guy he knows some professor from Wits University yeah. that specialize in veins yeah and then he sent me to that guy and I got there and he was like right straight away to hospital you can't wait any longer what? because they were too scared if it breaks down it can go into your yeah. heart and, yeah it can like die instantly so he had like he, he runs a ward in the hospital mm-hmm. so I went there for like two days and then I was on blood thinners warfarin and some injection I had to use twice a day in my stomach for six oh, days jeez Louise yeah, yeah. and then yeah, I, they didn't really know what happened. They, the one, like I think it was the professor that said the vein, there's a vein running from your between your muscle and the this elbow, the yeah. bone here, between the bone and the muscle, and the muscle grew and it pinned the vein. That's okay. what they think that it is, but they don't really know wow. what the whole reason behind it. So you were never diagnosed with anything. No. It just happened. I have no idea. You know? And you just recovered. Yeah, after that I recovered. Yeah. And then, um, wow. Yeah, and I just from there. I don't know. I just yeah took it easy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Every I had to go for checkups like twice a month. You know, blood wow. checkups and stuff like that for three months or so, three four months. Mm. Mm. Yeah, after that, once they cleared me, you know, it's cool. I can start okay. training again. Tell me something. I always have this thing about um, it's called your favorite fa- failure. So it's. Something that happened in your career where you've learned your biggest lessons that put you on the path now for success. What would that have been? I would say it would be it would be that. Okay. That what did you learn from it? Know, not to give up. Okay. You know, not to stop believing. I, I would say mm. I could have then just have been like, oh, mm. maybe this is not for me. You know, mm. I'll stop. What if it happens again? Yeah. You know, to be honest, I haven't really thought about that moment ever again mm. until like people ask me about it. Yeah. Yeah. So. I know it's weird and it's strange that it happened, but I just keep mm. that in the mm. back of my mind yeah. and I keep going. Um, so, yeah, I would say that. Even, okay. yeah, yeah. From, ev- ev- from that moment, I think I just kept on growing, yeah. just getting better in my sport. So what, what's the thing that motivates you? What's the thing that wakes you up in the morning to, d- to do what you do? You know, for a lot of people, it's obviously you want to be successful, you want to be... You, you want to make money and mm. you want to have a good lifestyle mm. for me personally uh, I would say myself and Nolan when, whenever we go out training we ask we talk to each other lots okay. and we go in depth about these things and mm. and I, I came up with this thing where you know once you once you've left this earth and mm. you've gone what will you really remember that mm. you know? um, it's like there's a, so many millionaires out there mm. you can't even you know mm. You can't, you don't know 10 of these people, mm. but if you leave with a good legacy, mm. they will always be remembered yeah. in history, you know. That's so cool. that's that's what I try or want to try to mm. achieve mm. to have a good legacy and leave that behind. And once I'm gone 50 years from now, people will always talk to me like, Do you remember that guy that mm. did that or mm. did that? Or I remember when you used to train up there, or, yeah, you know, did so well. So that's my personal feeling in terms of. Course. What I want to well, do. It seems like you, like you and Nolan, or this Nolan is a mentor, and how important yeah. is that relationship? Though? No, it is. It's like a big brother, mm. I can say. Um, mm. He's older brother to me. Um, so I would say I've learned a lot from him, and he's also in my um, 
growing he's also learned a lot from me um mm. we've we've the time that we spend together we we i think we push our, our limits mm. you know yeah. um to get better every yeah. time and we talk and it's 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 good sometimes we argue or not argue we, we disagree mm. and then it's it's healthy that we disagree on the things that we then get constructive mm. criticism the criticism yeah. back you know and just explain the whole situation yeah. rather than just yeah. know, accept what is and mm. go on mm. like that so okay cool are we expected to, are we is our goals for the olympics 2020 it is a big goal mm. um that would be insane mm. um, i can achieve that or do that but yeah that's ultimately yeah, yeah big goal it's a big dream yeah so what happens after once that happens what's what's clinton's future of the olympics after Olympics, I would say I would still want to be in the sport. You know, I want I want to give back. Mm. You know, there's lots of people or children out there like myself. Mm. Um, similar situations mm. that you don't know about, haven't heard about. That's really good as well. Mm. And on that grassroots level, you know, it's just the development side and then yeah. just picking yeah. out the right people and not just picking out. There's a lot of I would say folks also pick up, but then identify but then nothing else happens afterwards you know you want to see the progression in life as well afterwards yeah it's just the basic uh, you've been identified and you you go there and then oh good it's time to do now next one so Mm. that's Mm. the whole progression you know Mm. so Mm. i think that's what i want to do uh, in the sport and uh your your biggest challenge in your professional career um you stay on top i think Mm. you know there's always there's always one or two new guys coming along wanting to do this, you know. Yeah, the youngsters yeah. are getting younger and younger yeah, and younger. Yeah, they're getting older. It's yeah. harder to get the same condition that you got years ago or yeah. something like that. So to stay on top of the game, to um, sorry, uh, to be, yeah, just to be, I think, the best that you can be. Yeah. I think that's the biggest challenge, to mentally to be prepared every time, to wake up every morning, yeah. to do it over and over again. You yeah, don't have less to get on that bike. You have no, to get on the bike. It's freezing out there. It's <laughs> hot, you know. People coming, I come back from training. They see me like, oh, you've had been yeah. like 45 degrees, you know. <laughs> you know so, yeah. So just to do that, to know mm. what you're doing it for, you know, yeah. eventually. And then yeah. once you've achieved that glory for that whatever five to ten minutes of fame that yeah. you got at that whatever competition or yeah. event, and then you look back and it was all worth it. Yeah. Know, all the hard work for three to four months. You know. Yeah. So that's the loss awesome. of sacrifice yeah. away from your family, away from everyone. You know. so yeah, I mean, I mean, to sit on a sit on a saddle for four hours is not. Yeah, it's not <laughs> fun at all. You know. I got used to it. No, of course, it gets it. numb after. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, Tell me something. I was interested, like. Because doping is so big in cycling. Tell me the, like when you at the, for example, with the Olympics. Mm-hmm. How do they, like do they just come randomly knock yeah, on your door? Yeah, you know, I'm currently, uh, well, the past few years, I'm on uh, Adams, which is okay. a part of the system of WADA, which basically means I give them sole right to come test me at any time of the day, anywhere. Okay, anywhere. cool. I have to provide them of my whereabouts, wherever I am, all the time. Wow, it's like a tracker, like correctional yeah, yeah, supervision. Like, yeah, if I'm going to say I'm sleeping at this address tonight, then I need to report that and say I'm, I'm like staying there. Like every evening? Or what? Yeah, every evening. I have to repeat where I'm going to be every evening. So I'll give them a time slot, say, what? 7 to 8. Yeah, 7 to 8 o'clock. I'm going to be every day at this address. And then, you know, they can come test me any day. So how often, so you know, you know, say, say we're talking about two weeks, Monday to Sunday, week, week. Yeah. You're telling them every evening, how no, often? I tell them Monday schedules, so. Okay, yeah, yeah, all right, so cool. it, it comes in quarter, so it's a uh, three-month schedule. Okay, and yeah. do they just surprise you? Or? Yeah, no, what? definitely. Yeah. That's insane. That's, well, that's the whole, the whole point of it. Yeah. You can't actually, they can't find you like, oh, let's say you back. That's <laughs> 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 like, exactly. You know, then the old cat's low. And yeah. So basically, you just, yeah, you just, they just rock up. It's either early in the morning, like what? really early, or really late at night, which is irritating. What? And they take blood and everything. And like, in, like, in yeah, they take some Not blood urine, blood. is it? Not no, and blood. Urine and blood. That is insane. Yeah. So, so okay, so in a month period, how many times are you tested? Yeah, I would say like maybe twice. Okay, so it's not that bad, no, but you still have bad. to just give answer. 
Yeah. It wasn't having a girlfriend. Like you no, have to say where you are. Yeah, the thing is, um, the unexpected, you know? They just yeah. feel like, Boop, we are at your gate. Wow. And then... Wow. Yeah, I'm still so why don't you just create the app for them so they can see the movements of the faces <laughs> all the time? No, that's talking, I think. <laughs> 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 talking, yeah. I went that. Okay, dude, dude, thanks so much for chatting to me. No wow, and I mean, wait, good luck. Wait, congratulations on your bronze medal. Thanks. And clean it like they're telling you how to clean it. Yeah. Um, and good luck with, tom- is it tomorrow? No, Boxing day? After, after Christmas. Good yeah. luck for the 40 la- 87 laps. 87, yeah. Okay, I hope the weather's not as bad. I say it's gonna rain, but. Oh, lovely. Mm-hmm. Is that good? No, it's not good. Slippery. Then it means the event is not gonna happen. It's very slippery. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So, so, do you ride under your uh, own brand? Like, no, I'll be representing Bike Aid. Nice. Yeah. Okay, that's so, awesome. Yeah. I can't ride wow, it. that's okay. That's really, really cool. Yeah, yeah, good luck on that. And then good luck on the training for the 2020. That Thank is you, man. That's insane. I mean, if yeah. you can. Do that and also slip in <laughs> at the end, photo finish. Yeah, that would be really. Uh, Yo, that would be. Know, eh? Anything yeah. is possible. Yeah. yeah. But dude, thanks so much. Wait, 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 what's on the what's on the Christmas list? On the Christmas list, uh, eating with the family. Okay, cool. Like a little bit of a reunion. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, and then come back and then relax. Okay, when you're leaving to Germany. So it will be. So we have a training camp in Mallorca, Spain, in like two weeks. Dude, you like seeing so the yeah. world? That's amazing. Yeah, but I don't. Yeah, okay, yeah. I don't go so early. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, being away, so. Yeah, so that's true. I uh, just want to like found mm. found time, you know. Mm. So mm. I mm. would make I would go to that, and I think I will leave like in the Jan maybe. Okay. Cool. Yeah, depending because we have a race over at starting really early. So okay. So I just have to find out if I'm starting yet or not. So. Yeah. So I mean, over festive, you're watching your diet, you're eating correctly, yeah. you're not yeah, having. Yeah, man. Yeah, I wow. have to do that because. No uh, trifle tomorrow for Christmas tomorrow. <laughs> Maybe one. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, that's good. Yeah, you have to check. So. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. If you have that dream of twenty twenty. Yeah, it's important. That's a lifestyle we chose. Yeah. yeah. It's not for everyone. You know. So. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. Good. But uh, hopefully we win on Boxing Day. That would yeah. be amazing. In this off twenty eighteen on the top. Exactly. So how does the long distance relationship work? Is it? No. It was doesn't work. No. No, the long distance relationship with the girlfriend. Well, next year, you're talking about. Yeah. No, previously. No, previously, this year. No, it wasn't long distance. Oh, okay. We were living together. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, so. This year, the couple will suffer. Yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> but, Chris, yeah, thanks so much, dude. Yeah. It was really, really cool. Thanks, thanks dude. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me.